Steering strokes. <clears throat> okay, so um, quite a lot to consider here, and um, it must be stressed that you know, in terms of steering, it's not just the steerer; it's it's six that's doing the steering. You can have seat five who can intervene, seats one, seat two can be involved in the steering process. Therefore, you know this is key to uh, the the steerer's uh, arsenal. Of, uh, of other players he can bring into the, or she can bring into the uh, steering situation. Um, so just going through, rudder strokes and poking. Well, the poke is the, uh, uh, the and the rudder stroke is the thing that we use the most of, um, and it's the one that brings about the greatest change. But there, there's a cautionary note here because you want to use it as, as sparingly as possible because every time you use it, it creates a lot of drag, even though it's the most effective. Um, so what you want to do here is um, anticipate and try to uh, exercise a, a poke as soon as possible um, before things get out of hand. Better still using power strokes, but the rudder stroke really is almost the last option, but it tends to be the one that gets you overused the most, but it is absolutely effective. Um, the negatives of a, of a steering stroke are primarily that it creates a lot of uh, drag, and furthermore, that as soon as you stop paddling, yeah, that's dead weight which your crew has to take up. So, in the in this chapter, that a lot of that does get explained. Um, we cover over steering, for example, where you know uh, when you're learning, especially, there's a tendency to steer the canoe through the eye where you're going, and then back over to to the left and to the right, and so forth. So you're constantly zigzagging like this. And that's over oversteering effectively. So um, a quick tip on that is, you know, if you are headed this way and you start to veer off, say to the right, if you poke on the left and she starts to come back online, about halfway through that correction, take the take the uh, the paddle out and just let the inertia take do the rest of it. If you leave it in all the way to the to your line of course, then it'll tend to swing through. Then you can't you're going to be doing this back and forth. Um, again, that's all explained um, in the chapter. Small frequent pokes, you know, the idea of taking lots of small little pokes uh, rather than taking one large one kind of makes sense because if you are of the mindset where you're paddle, 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 quick poke, uh, that's absolutely fine. But if you're poke, 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 and then a, then a couple of uh, strokes, uh, that's not the right mindset. So you really want to sort of uh, be paddling as much as possible and then if you need to do a quick poke, do so, but don't leave it so long that the correction has to be um, a, a lot greater. So, you know, if the canoe's off by this much, the, sometimes you just let it wander and that's absolutely fine. It'll come back online. Other times it'll keep going. You have to correct, but know when that time is to, to, to give it a quick poke rather than sort of, uh, you know, leave, have, to, have to make a, a big, big change um, and, and along a delay. Again, that's all explained. So the technique for poking, well, again, how you enter the paddle. So you'd be paddling and then you want to go into a poke. How do you do that? So what you're aiming to do here is close the gap between the side of the canoe and getting the, the, uh, the paddle up close to the side of the hull. And through, uh, through pressure and a good design of paddle, that'll be pressed up against the side of the canoe. But again, that's as I explained in the, in the, in the chapter on uh, paddles. So you need a good paddle is going to assist you with that as well how you position the paddle so whether you position it so it's ahead of the body line level with the body line or behind you you know why is that important where should it where should it be at any particular time but that's covered your body alignment you know how you uh twist and and uh, rotate your body in terms of being able to you know offset the uh, the pressure band that you're going to feel from the blade back up into the body that's important so again we cover those those issues that, um, quite uh, in detail um quarter pokes half pokes full pokes so these are all various ways in which you can use the blade in terms of how deep you, you you're going to poke it and uh, how big of a correction you need to make so um that again that's a skill you learn you don't have to use all the paddle you just use a little bit of it or half of it will potentially all of it so again that's covered in 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 some detail uh poking you know whether you poke ahead of the body line um you know that this the, the, or as before mentioned vertically or behind you 
poking ahead of the body line is actually always is very advantageous. It's a little bit like having the rudder on a OC1. If you place it further forward, the canoe will be a lot more responsive. If you put the rudder far back, it's going to be a little bit less so. So much the same that applies to steering a canoe. If you put the, the blade ahead of your body line, you can have a bit more uh, purchase and leverage and a uh, bigger, bigger effect on the turning of, of, the, of, of the canoe. Um, but we explain all this in, term, in terms of, you know, the differences between those angles of poke. Um, we'll work going, going through the positioning of the legs. The legs are very important with a paddle, with a, with a steerer rather, because you know they can spend long, you can spend long periods of time uh, uh, sitting and in a very cramped situation. And then when you're looking at uh, distance racing and, um, um, uh, for example, doing change races, you will find that you know you're going to have to move around a lot, because otherwise you'll get uh, all the blood pulls to the legs. How, how do you deal with that? So that's something to be um, to, to to take into consideration. Removing the paddle out of the water, you know, when to do that, how to do that, is, it becomes critical. Power steering, paddle steering. You know, this is, um, paddle steering or power, power, power steering is, is very much, a, it's going to suck, suck, does suck the life out of you. So you've got to learn to uh, be conservative with it, but utilize it often in preference to, say, poking. So, you know, your first course of action is to do a power, some form of power steering and correctional stroke. And then if that's going to fail, go into your poke. Um, you know, a lot of steerers will tend to just go take the easy option out every time and just go to the poke. But as, as mentioned before, the problem with that is, of course, that you end up um, constantly uh, expecting your crew to take up your own, your, your body weight. So wherever you can exercise the power stroke and then from there go into the um into the rudder stroke pitch stroke and that's all part of this as well so that that is actually part of the power steering actually how you how you um would, would carry that out uh draw stroke so this is really to do with seats one two five and six so you know in seats one and two you know they are controlling the front of the canoe and it's important that they um that they work with you um and seat five obviously obviously is there always as your backup um importantly though seats one and two so for example you could be in the middle of a race and seat one sees a rock suddenly looming up ahead steerer hasn't seen it now they need to be able to to, to put in a stroke which is going to correct it and pull the nose around to avoid it you know sometimes these things happen so quickly that uh, you don't have time to have a discussion about it so Part of your role as you know within this seat is at six is to ensure that you know the other seats know about the steering uh, strokes and then to act to act when it's appropriate without seeking your permission to do so, especially in in terms of taking immediate and evasive action. Um, clearly, when you're doing when you're racing around the buoys when you're doing um, regatta racing, then obviously it's very important anyway because that's something that is is part of the whole turning process. Um, we discovered prize strokes. There are dynamic prize and static prize. The dynamic prize, actually, when you're using the side of the canoe as a lever, as a fulcrum point where you can crank it against the side of the canoe, not so good for the canoe, but it is done uh, more common when you do it going around markers again. Um, and there are, of course, static prize where you're uh, you're still using the side of the canoe, but you're not you're not levering it as such. Oh, okay. Back paddling and, and uh, back water. So I mean, these things are just, you know, often when you're they're manoeuvring uh, issues. So manoeuvring for the line, manoeuvring around a marker, manoeuvring backward to, to to bring the canoe up to a standstill, up to a, a, a jetty or something. You know, again, knowing how to make that call and being sure that everyone's aware of how how they're going to be doing that. Uh, so um, you know, you're making the call and you're expecting people to act on it. Breaking strokes so again, you know, if if you need to bring the canoe up to a stop, you know, that's one one way we can uh, sort of use the blade to to put the brakes on. So um, again, you need to be aware that the that the teams were aware of that and how to exercise that stroke uh, when you when you need it. Steering a double canoe, well, if you ever find yourself racing, um, you know, DC twelve, you know, that's something that you need to be aware of and just how you can. Uh, uh, how how it feels, how how it can be managed, and um, knowing who's going to take on the role of steering. Uh, 